Hi guys, so I hope so you would have already read the first part, the basics of psychiatric disorders. Next, we are going to move towards the next one, organic mental disorders. What is organic mental disorders? It is going to talk about the neurocognitive disorders. Neurocognitive disorders. So the first one, a important essay question, an important question that can be asked in the exam, that is going to be your delirium. What is delirium? Delirium is otherwise called as ICU psychosis. Delirium is otherwise called as ICU psychosis. Okay, wow. so uh, most common cause of organic mental disorders is your delirium. It is acute onset. They have fluctuating progression. What are the predisposing factors? You would have commonly noticed in your uh, in your ICU postings. If you are going to if you if you have happened to see ICU, sixty year old male. Maybe with the five years of hypertension, who have undergone appendectomy two days back, he will be in the ICU. Okay, he is going to be in the post of ICU, and he is telling, uh, he is not oriented. He is not oriented. That is called as delirium. Okay, wow. so any elderly patient after a major surgery, any medical illness, any bypass surgery, or after an alcohol withdrawal. Alcohol withdrawal is a special name. Common up alcohol withdrawal is a special name. What is the name of it? Delirium tremens. We call it as delirium tremens. Okay, wow. so check for consciousness by MSC mental status examination. Which we are going to check the consciousness of the patient. So the consciousness either it can be disoriented, altered sensorium will be there, clouding of uh, okay, there is going to be a clouding of. Okay, well, there, is, there is going to be a, he may not aware of self and surrounding. There is going to be a clouding of consciousness and cognition. You are going to check memory, language, perception, vision, and there will be remember at MCE. You are going to remember, you are going to check at MCE. What is at MCE? So in delirium patients will be having attention impairment. Delirium patient is going to have attention impairment motor disturbances there is going to be an increased or decrease in the motor disturbances sleep deprivation or sleep disturbances will be there and emotional disturbances will be there and emotional disturbances will be there for example there is uh, you can see this in the anxiety patient uh, the patient with depression or hallucination you can commonly see okay there are there are certain symptoms which you will be seeing at mce so remember three yes here what are the three yes Number one, sundowning. So symptoms is going to get worse at night. At night only, you will be having the feeling like my operation will be failed. Now, I cannot survive. I will not come out of ICU. All these things are called as delirium. Okay, well, slowing off, slowing off EEG waves. You will be seeing slowing of EEG waves and there will be sleep reversal. These are three years. At TMSC, can you tell, repeat along with me? A stands for attention. Okay, they yeah, want attention impairment. Then M stands for motor disturbance. S stands for sleep disturbance. E stands for emotional disturbance. Then three S. Number one, sleep downing. Okay, or sun downing, sun downing. And number two, sleep reversal. Number three, EEG waves will be slowing down. And you will be remembering three years. What are the three years? Number one, it's an acute condition. There is an altered sensorium and it's an autonomic dysfunction. It's an autonomic dysfunction. You go for a mini mental status examination. Okay, mini mental status examination. This mini mental status examination system was developed by uh, a uh, psychiatrist named Paul Stein. Okay, so, okay, total Paul Stein named it. Okay, well, so motto score when the 30 out of 30, at least 24 should be there. When it is going to be less than 24, you call it as impaired brain. Okay, there is going to be impaired brain function. There will be, you can term it as a impaired brain function. You term it as impaired brain function, guys. So how you will be remembering, remember it as oral, oral. Okay, oral or orientation. Attention, registration, recall, language. These are the five things which you are going to see. 
Next is a confusion assessment method. Confusion assessment method. Okay. So confusion assessment method. When the acetyl choline is reduced in the patient with delirium. Okay. Wow. So that is going to be your uh, confusion assessment method. You are going to go for EEG. You will see slowing of cortical background except in alcohol withdrawal dysfunction. How do you treat this patient? You are going to just treat the cause. You are going to just treat the cause. Okay, and you can give antipsychotic for these patients. For these patients, you can go for antipsychotic. Okay, so low dose antipsychotics is given for hallucination and benzodiazepines are given for okay, midazolam, insomnia, arcanala, midazolam, kudukala, or diazepam, kudukala. Okay, wa? so diazepam, kudukala. Okay, wa? so what is going to be the drug of choice in case of delirium tremens? Delirium tremens and then benzodiazepines. Okay, wow. This comes to the end of your discussion on delirium. Next important thing we are going to go is dementia. Uh, when I was in final year, I got a essay question. It was uh, it was Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's la one of the important thing is your dementia. Okay, Alzheimer's la important component is dementia. So what is dementia? There is a progressive cognitive impairment. There is a cognitive impairment, progressive cognitive impairment. In a clear consciousness, see, they will be conscious, but cognitive impairment with delirium la consciousness altered or go. Dementia la progressive cognitive impairment in the presence of clear consciousness. Okay, it increases with age. More than 85 years, more than 20 percentage of our population are having dementia. Symptoms number one, cognitive. So what are the cognitive symptoms? Remember memory lapse. M memory, amnesia will be there. L stands for language, A face, yeah. A stands for attention. So there will won't be any attention. P stands for perceptual motor system. So fine motor system problem and the apraxia and solving. When there is a problem and identifying object and faces, you call it as agnosia. You call it as agnosia. Okay, what is yes? S stands for social cognition, recognition of emotions. That is called a social cognition. And E stands for executive functioning, planning, decision making. Again, repeat along with me. Cognitive impairment. Memory lapse. M stands for amnesia, memory problem, amnesia. And L stands for language impairment, aphasia. A stands for attention deficit. P stands for perception problem. Either motor problem, perception, motor system problem. Apraxia, agnesia. What is apraxia? Apraxia means fine motor problem. What is agnesia? Identification of objects. What is E stands for? Emotional, social cognition. Yes, sir. Emotion recognition and E stands for executive functioning, planning and decision making. Okay, number two, neuropsychiatric disorder. So, neuropsychiatric disorder, it is personality changes, hallucination, delusions, depression, anxiety, mania. The mother, okay, so there are certain controversies. Most common type of dementia, most common type of dementia is Alzheimer's disease. Second most common type of dementia is Levy body dementia. Third one is vascular dementia. Early onset of dementia occurs before 65 years of age. Most common in Alzheimer's and second most common you will see this in the PIC disease. What is PIC disease? Frontotemporal dementia. Frontotemporal dementia. Okay, well, so there are different types of uh, dementia guys. Okay, there are 10 to 15 percentage of dementia are reversible. Causes, number one, neurosurgical causes like your uh, SDH, okay, uh, they can be intracranial hemorrhages, any tumors, any abscess, or even a normal pressure hydrocephalus. Dementia can occur due to some infections like encephalitis, meningitis, metabolic disorders like your decrease in the vitamin B12, decrease in the folate level, decrease in the niacin level, Hyper, hyperparathyroidism or hypoparathyroidism, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. Okay, all these conditions can cause a dementia. Okay, and uh, other causes include your alcohol and toxin. What are the different features of dementia? So, dementia can be of two types. Come on. Cortical dementia, non-cortical dementia. What is cortical dementia? When there is going to be a lesion at the cortex, like your Alzheimer's disease. Like your pig's disease. Here, motor functions will be normal. 
subcortical dementia na na gray matter la so your cerebellum gray matter hypothalamus okay so appa inda edathula la enna agum motor functions involve agum ena basal ganglia even ellarume motor function involve agum for example your parkinsonism like example your parkinson's disease multiple sclerosis okay wilson's disease multiple sclerosis wilson's disease huntington's chorea or progressive supranuclear palsy in all these things there is going to be abnormality in motor also motor function also so let's discuss one by one okay let's discuss one by one no one has thought that alzheimer's will be asked as a essay question when i was writing my final year exam what most of us did is we just remembered from the movie of dalgar salman o kadal ganmani from that we just remembered that grandma in that movie character in that movie and many people wrote answer of that that was the reality happened because no one concentrated psychiatry but they have asked the essay from psychiatry that is why i am covering this uh, old topic on all the psychiatric disorders because luck favors you if you are asked a psychiatric disorder you will be getting a full marks in your essay guys because the answers will be very easy to write alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia cortical type it is going to be slow in onset it has a parieto temporal distribution it is very common most common in female that's why i told you to remember that grandma pathology problem is going to be because of the atrophy in the brain there are two type of atrophy can occur one intracellular atrophy other intercellular atrophy or i can call it as uh, extra sorry extra cellular and intracellular what is intracellular atrophy due to intracellular atrophy is due to hyper phosphorylated tau protein what is this tau protein amyloidosis okay so amyloidosis la neenga paathirupeenga what is amyloidosis can someone tell me it's from general pathology you would have learned it in the very 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 beginning when you are in the second year what is general pathology la you would have learned this very important question what is that question you would have talked about you would have talked about what is your amyloidosis what is your amyloidosis amyloidosis na enna can someone put in the chat box can someone put in the chat box what is amyloidosis yes you can you can you can just think 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 deposition okay in a type of deposition it's going to be some accumulation intracellular accumulation yes what type of intracellular accumulation is going to be your amyloidosis alzheimer's la neenga paathradhu vandu yes alzheimer's la it is going to be tau protein which is going to get also accumulated in alzheimer's disease okay tau protein is going to get accumulated accepted but in general what is amyloidosis in general what is amyloidosis if you don't know kindly go today itself and try to read amyloidosis because this is very very important you need to understand what is amyloidosis because they are some intracellular accumulation nareya edathra inge mattum illa it is going to get accumulated in variety of areas okay it is going to get accumulated in variety of areas that is why your amyloidosis uh, topic per se is very very important amyloidosis topic per se is very very important okay so they are the extra cellular deposit of fibrillin protein i myself told it is a extra cellular deposit of fibrillar protein okay why because after tissue damage the aggregation of your misfolded proteins occurs this misfolded proteins usually have to be removed but when this removal is going to be mutated that will cause amyloidosis and the tau proteins on the alzheimer's la irukadume vande amyloidosis ko or example da there is neurofibrillary tangles okay there is neurofibrillary tangles so extra cellular component vande beta amyloid deposition plaque like deposit that usually occurs in the senile okay neurotropic plaques number 1 intracellular neurofibrillary tangles number 2 extracellular we are discussing about the neuro uh, you are discussing about the neurotic plaque or senile plaques number 3 is going to be your irano bodies what is irano bodies actin deposit 
it's a actin deposit now you will understand the importance why i told you to read amyloidosis so under genetic theory in your chromosome 21 down syndrome there is a amyloid precursor protein associated with down syndrome chromosome 19 apolipoprotein e4 increases risk whereas e2 decreases your risk then you have chromosome 17 that is your tau protein that is mainly involved in your alzheimer's disease guys and you have chromosome 14 it is going to be a presenilin 1 which is a most common familial alzheimer's and chromosome 6 is involved and chromosome 1 is involved presenilin 2 and trem 2 so all are going to be autosomal dominant so what basically happens, there is going to be decrease in the acetylcholine, increase in the glutamate. So this is going to cause excessive excitation. This is going to cause excessive excitation. And uh, then we have, uh, this is going to be your Alzheimer's disease. Treatment, let's see. But we have also seen that there are other conditions like Levy body dementia. What is this Levy body dementia? You are going to have a fluctuating cognition, visual hallucination, and motor symptoms that looks like Parkinsonism. Motor symptoms that is going to be looking like Parkinsonism, like tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, and they have increased sensitivity to antipsychotics. So they are antipsychotic induced extrapyramidal symptoms. They are antipsychotic induced extrapyramidal symptoms. That is the pathology behind it. You will be having a Levy bodies very similar to that of you see in the Parkinson's. So, this is nothing but intracellular neuronal degenerative bodies. Okay, degenerative bodies made of alpha synuclein. So, it's an intracellular neuronal degenerative bodies which is made up of alpha synuclein. Alpha synuclein. Alpha synuclein. If the difference between the LBD and Parkinsonism is LBD as a cognitive function disorder cognitive function disorder it can have motor symptoms it may not have motor symptoms but parkinson it is a motor symptom will be there they will be having motor symptom predominated than your cognitive symptom which comes secondary okay which comes secondary third is going to be a vascular dementia second most common type of dementia after your alzheimer's disease is going to be your vascular dementia why there is a vascular dementia due to some multiple infracts acute in onset they are going to be a atherosclerotic changes that is going to be occurring in the blood vessels supplying your brain and that will be due to there are some risk factors like increased aging smoking any chromosomal mutation there is going to be a chromosomal mutation or when there is going to be a chronic hypertension, or when there is going to be a male, particularly diabetic mellitus. So this occurs more common in the male when compared to that of the females. Okay, so what you're going to do is, you are going to have a stepwise deterioration. So after 30 years, one stroke or followed by one 40 years, one stroke or 50 years, one stroke or over what you or ischemic changes here, there will going to be a worsening of your symptoms. That is called as stepwise deterioration, step ladder deterioration. There will be a focal neurological deficit. Then you have frontotemporal dementia. Frontotemporal dementia means frontal area and temporal areas are going to be affected. Two forms, okay. There's going to be two forms: biological variant or language variant or Biological variant or language variant or Biological variant means it's going to involve the frontal lobe. Okay, B then first word frontal lobe. Okay, so behavioral B when the A kapra word so adinala behavioral frontal lobe, front language variant temporal lobe language variant is going to be temporal lobe so what are the frontal lobe problem there is going to be a disinhibited behavior personality changes will be there mood changes will be there for the patient this occurs with frontal lobe temporal lobe la vandha pathinga emotional changes okay emotional problems memory problems and hyperphagia will be there okay next we are going to discuss about the huntington's disease a uh, common short note question asked in your exam. What is Huntington's disease? It is a subcortical type of dementia is occurring here. It is an autosomal dominant knowledge. Autosomal dominant present in the fourth decade. Okay, D4. Remember like D4. Okay, so it's a, it's an autosomal dominant 
it's going to be presenting in the fourth decade due to chromosomal 4 inversion and chromosomal 4 inversion and dementia is very common here and dementia is very common. Caudate and putamen nucleus are going to be affected. What are the affecting things here? You're going to have caudate and putamen nucleus is going to be affected. GABA neurons are affected. So there is going to be involuntary coriform movements. So what will be there? You will be having an involuntary coriform movements. Okay. So there is going to be a CAG trinucleotide repeats. This is biochemistry. Okay. Next point is normal pressure hydrocephalus. Okay, so what are the conditions? Alzheimer's, Levy body disease, vascular dementia, frontotemporal dementia, Huntington's disease. Now we are seeing normal pressure hydrocephalus. So normal pressure hydrocephalus, you have a triad of events. So what is the triad? You have dementia along with it urinary disturbances and gait disturbances. They are going to be enlarged and prominent ventricles will be there. CSF pressure will be normal. Thin brain tissues will be there around your ventricles. Thin brain tissues will be there around your ventricles. And gait in this condition is going to be apraxic gait. Apraxic gait. There is going to be a apraxic gait. Okay, wow. so apraxic gait. Rapid clinical innovation intervention is necessary. If you are going to be diagnosing early change, you can rapidly reverse them back to normal position. So that is going to be your normal pressure hydrocephalus. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. Okay. Next, you are going to have is your this very important syndrome, guest uh, Gerstmann syndrome. What is Gerstmann syndrome? There is a agraphasia, agraphasia, agraphia, agraphia, along with. Okay, a calculia, that is, you will not be able to calculate max problem. And finger agnosia, finger agnosia, left-right confusion, that is called as Gerstmann syndrome, that is called as Gerstmann syndrome. Dementia is also seen in Parkinson's, dementia is also seen in Wilson, dementia is also seen in multiple sclerosis. All these are subcortical, HIV related, irreversible, HIV related, it's an irreversible change. Yet trauma, again, yet trauma can cause dementia. That is, okay, the example, punch, uh, boxer punch, that is dementia pugilistica, dementia pugilistica or punch, the punch drunk syndrome. Okay, then you have two important difference. You have to know difference between the seizures and pseudo seizures. Seizures, any time, place, person, it can occur. You will have a tongue bite. There is a urinary incontinence and it is very common. What is pseudo seizures? It occurs in the daytime. Okay. It occurs when the family people are going to be around them. When there is a stressful situation. When there is a stressful situation. This is a very uncommon condition. In your seizures, you will be having an increased plantar reflex. They cannot be induced. After an episode, you will have an increase in prolactin. EEG will be showing slowing of waves. But in Gavande, it is very uncommon. Plantar reflex will be reduced. You can induce it. And this there will be no changes in the prolactin levels. EEG will be normal. So, okay, this is the difference between the both. I want you all to remember that. Now, finally, we are moving towards the pharmacotherapy management of delirium management of delirium management of uh, your uh, alzheimer's disease so idella eda therinja engalukku alzheimer's disease treatment enna eda therla seriously without no without reading how will you write the treatment plan how will you write the man pharmacological management non pharmacological management you will write dementia okay diazepam kudukala benzodiazepines kudukala indha maadhiri or common ah eda theriyum but uh, understanding the pathology and clinical features you will be able to write the management also very well that is what we are going to do right now okay read the cause number 1 first and foremost what you are going to do you are going to treat the cause. Then pharmacotherapy. Okay. Second thing is you are going to do is pharmacotherapy. Moon Vishwam. Number one, call in esterase inhibitor. How you are going to give? Why you are going to give call in esterase inhibitor? Nama patho la acetylcholine level kammi arka idam problem te. Adinala nama call in esterase inhibitors kudukro. Call in esterase inhibitors kudta enna ago. Call in esterase inhibitors kudukrappa acetylcholine level nareya ago. 
ஓகே செகண்ட் வந்து யூ கேன் கோ ஃபார் என்எம்டிஏ ஆன்டகோனஸ் ஸோ நம்ம பார்த்தோம் எக்ஸசிவ் குளுட்டமேட்டோட ஸ்டிமுலேஷன் காசஸ் டெசன்ட் அதனால நம்ம என்ன பண்றோம் என்எம்டிஏ ஆன்டகோனஸ் கொடுக்குறோம் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் மெமான்டென் ஓகே ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் மெமான்டென் Okay, so we are going to give that in the moderate to severe dementia. So what are the different types of cholinesterase inhibitors? You have Tacrin, which is not commonly used because of repetitoxicity. Then you have DRG. So Donopizil, Rivastigmine, Galantomin. Donopizil, Rivastigmine, Galantomin. Donopizil, Rivastigmine, Galantomin. If you look at these three, it's a cholinesterase or anticholinesterase or anticholinesterase. cholinesterase inhibitors then you have memantin memantin is a example of your nmda antagonist you give this in the moderate to severe cases these are going to block your glutamate receptors and third one is your aducanumab what is a nab mab la mudinjale monoclonal antibody so what it does is it attaches with the a beta deposits and helps in clearance of a beta deposit this helps in the exactly this is the management for alzheimer's disease this is the management of alzheimer's disease which you need to understand out of this fourth one is going to be a lank lecanemab this is also a monoclonal antibody that is going to be attaching to your a beta and clear it so this is specific symptom okay specific uh, treatment according to the pathology you have various signs and symptoms right so we have to give a symptomatic treatment what is going to be your symptomatic treatment number 1 antipsychotics so you can have delirium and hallucination so anti psychotics is given to inhibit the delirium and hallucination and you can go for antidepressants to occur, to help from depression and anxiety benzodiazepines will be given for insomnia so as uh, there will be agitations in the alzheimer's right to in order to block the agitations in your alzheimer's you give brexpiprazole you give brexpiprazole brexpiprazole agitations in alzheimer's is treated by brexpiprazole okay wow this is a fda approved drug for agitation in alzheimer's okay wow so this can be asked as a question for you all brexpiprazole okay next one amnestic disorders okay the third organic mental disorder which we are going to see is amnestic disorder this is going to be uh, impairing only your memory okay va wow. so memory impairment irukala sometime memory vandu pathinga na intact ah irukala memory impaired ah da you divide into recent memory impair ah iruka remote memory impair ah iruka then intact ah irundadna immediate recall kashtam ah iruka illa consciousness problem iruka global intellectual abilities problem ah iruka you are going to test so what are the causes for the amnestic disorders cns cause seizures traumatic brain injury cerebral tumors any infections or any stroke systemic causes alcohol induced thiamine deficiency korakoff syndrome korakoff syndrome then you have metabolic hypoglycemia hypoxia and respiratory cardiovascular metabolic compromise and carbon monoxide intoxication carbon monoxide intoxication so okay ma so let's do some mcqs okay shall we do some mcqs guys at this point are you all ready are you all ready to just uh, answer some mcqs yes let's see which of the following is a subcortical dementia huntington's disease wilson's disease parkinson's disease pigs disease which of the following is a subcortical dementia huntington disease yes wilson's disease yes parkinson disease yes it is a subcortical dementia what about your pigs disease pigs disease is fronto temporal dementia remember guys pigs disease is a fronto temporal dementia okay so cortex la cortical enna na answer alzheimers and pigs mattum da subcortical la da antington scoria parkinson multiple sclerosis wilson disease put your answer in the comment box which of the following differentiates delirium from alzheimers in dementia agitation and irritation visual hallucination impairment of memory and agitation acute onset and level of consciousness which of the following is going to differentiate delirium and alzheimers dementia agitation and irritation visual hallucination impairment of memory and agitation 
அக்யூட் ஆன்சர்ட் அண்ட் லெவல் ஆஃப் கான்சியஸ்னஸ் ரிமம்பர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆப்ஷன் பாருங்க அஜிடேஷன் அண்ட் இரிட்டேஷன் இட் பி பிரசன்ட் இன் போத் டெலிரியம் அண்ட் யுவர் அல்சிமாஸ் டிமென்ஷியா விஷுவல் அலசினேஷன் எஸ் தி கேன் பி இன் போத் ஃபால்ஸ் பெர்செப்ஷன் இம்பேர்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் மெமரி அண்ட் அஜிடேஷன் இட் கேன் பி இன் போத் but acute onset and level of consciousness see in delirium it is going to be acute onset fluctuating course but dementia it is going to be insidious and progressive in nature it is going to be insidious and progressive in nature okay va and which are the following okay that's all so we will complete with this and uh, two important thing i didn't highlight i want to tell is difference between hyperactive delirium hypoactive delirium and mixed delirium hyperactive delirium na it is a increased psychomotor activities like restlessness hyper arousal increased speech easily identified due to dramatic symptoms this is common in drug withdrawal hypoactive delirium enga paakalana in case of your metabolic encephalopathy you can see okay next is a mixed delirium enga mixed delirium paakala can see that in presence of both either simultaneous or subsequently okay alzheimer's disease or short okay whatever we read i'm just giving in a short alzheimer's disease uh, insidious in onset short term memory loss language deficit and spatial disorientation is going to be there personality changes is going to be there vascular dementia it's a step line decline okay early executive function dysfunction cerebral infraction or deep white matter changes on neuro imaging fronto temporal dementia early personality changes apathy disinhibition and compulsive behaviors will be there and fronto temporal atrophy will be there on imaging dementia with levy bodies visual hallucination spontaneous parkinsonism fluctuating cognition will be there normal pressure hydrocephalus gait abnormality urinary incontinence there is going to be a dementia okay there there can be dilated ventricles on your neuro imaging and finally you are going to have your crudes jacob disease crudes fell jacob disease is your prion disease behavioral changes will be present rapidly progressive and myoclonal or seizures can be present so at the end of today's discussion what i want you all to understand is in the first tap on the first video we have discussed about uh, uh, in a very short brief way we discussed about the basic neuro basic psychiatric disorders what are the basic terminologies we have discussed in the second topic we have discussed about the organic mental disorders third day that is day after tomorrow okay tomorrow we will be discussing about the schizophrenia day after tomorrow we daily we will discuss one by one okay so this comes to the end of today okay so maybe let's uh, let's see tomorrow let's start with the wonderful discussion again tomorrow okay thank you so much